So my mom never liked change. Like, she lived in the same house for 40 years in the same small town where nothing ever happened, and she liked it that way. She wouldn't even let us change the clocks during daylight savings time because she thought if you changed it too often, it might break. But alas, the times are changing, and the, the times were changing in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma as well. Our longtime neighbors next door passed away from old age, so their house was left empty and unsold for a long time. When I came home for Christmas that year, my mom encouraged me to um, mow the lawn and tidy up a bit because things had gotten out of hand, and she thought that might help sell the house. And it did. A few months later, the house sold. So as the neighborhood snoop, it was my mom's job to figure out who the new neighbors were and what they were about. So she's trying to go catch them and drop by, and she brings cookies, and they never seem to be home. So she calls me to give me the report, and she's like, the wife, she must have to work. <laughs> so one day, she's a... Uh, She's, uh, she has to, it's trash day, and my mom has to take the trash out. So she's 80 years old, and she uses a walker. So trash day looks like this. She picks up the trash bag, tosses it a few feet in the, uh, ahead of her, takes a few steps, bends down, picks it up, tosses it ahead, so, and so on. And so she's making her way down the driveway when she hears this rustling in the yard next door, and she turns to see this woman coming at her in a full-on black burqa. Now, let me tell you what my mom is thinking. Oh, my God, it's Armageddon. Obama has let the terrorists in and declared Sharia law. <laughs> so she's hustling, running up the stair or back the driveway to get to safety. When, of course, the woman comes over and puts her hand on the walker and says, you stay. And my mom stays because she's frozen with terror. <laughs> and the woman, of course, picks up the bag and takes it to the curb for her and comes back and says, sorry, no English. And then she goes back to her house. So then my mom rushes into the house and calls me to say, oh my God, the terrorists have moved in next door and I'm pretty sure we're under attack. And then she puts down the, or sorry, the doorbell rings and she puts down the phone and she says, hang on. And she comes to get me, or she goes to the door and she sees that it's the woman next door. And she doesn't know whether to open the door or not because, you know, she's a terrorist and all. But on the other hand, she'd been kind of nice. So, all right. So she opens the door and the woman is holding a cell phone and she gives it to her. And it's the woman's son, and her son says, my mom has just moved here from Syria, and she doesn't speak English, and she doesn't know anyone, and she wants to know if you will teach her English. Now, my mom grew up in the Ozark Mountains of Arkansas, and she never made it past the seventh grade, and she was always really self-conscious and embarrassed about the fact that she didn't have an education. So she comes back to the phone with a whole new attitude. Guess what? I'm going to be an English teacher. <laughs> And I'm thinking, oh, dear God, this poor woman from Syria is going to learn to speak English with a hillbilly accent. <laughs> so, so I come home for Christmas that year, and the woman next door invites us over for tea. Now, my mom has been spending almost every day with her teaching her English, but somehow has never figured out how to pronounce her name. So she starts calling her Noelle. I don't know why, but she calls her Noel. This woman moves from Syria, comes to Oklahoma, has no, no idea, you know, what, doesn't celebrate Christmas, but now my mom has named her Christmas, effectively. So, so we go over, and the name is kind of fitting because she's so warm and welcoming, welcoming and wonderful, and she has created this amazing feast for us. And we come in and we sit down, and as we're talking, she's sharing stories about Syria. And she tells me about the trees and how beautiful they were. She called them the trees of joy because they grew these figs that were so sweet and delicious you couldn't find them anywhere else on the planet. And as she talks about the beauty of Syria, her face lights up and her eyes glisten. And she leans over and she touches my hand and she says, you should go. You should go visit sometime. And then her face saddens because she knows none of us can go to Syria. She was one of the lucky ones. She got out early, and her, she was able to bring her, whole fa her immediate family with her. But she had left a lot of family behind, and she hadn't heard from them in a while, and she didn't know she was ever going to hear from them again. She had been a professor in Syria. She was very intelligent and revered and respected, and her husband was a professor as well. But in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, he was a taxi driver, and she mostly stayed home. And despite everything that happened, I would say that she embodied the Christmas spirit, spirit in a way because she was so full of joy and love and light and gratitude, both for the life that she had before and the life that she had now. Six months later, my mom died, and I came home, and I had to go next door and tell Noel that uh, 
my mom had passed away. But I guess my mom never got around to telling her what death or dead was or what that word was in English because I couldn't really communicate to her what was happening. So we got her son on the phone and he translated for me. And when she realized what had happened, she fell onto the couch and she burst into tears. And she said, no, she was my best friend. I loved her so much. And in the last year of my mom's life, she finally embraced change. And in return, she was given a great friendship from a woman from Syria that she called Christmas. Thank you.